Hi all, Tony here from Immortality Cryptocurrency. Today we want to look at a paper that's been going around which has been mentioned multiple times. In fact, we've got two papers and they are contradictory. A first paper reads, Mutations across animal kingdom shed new light on aging. The quantity of mutations acquired similar over lifetime of 16 species despite vast differences in lifespan and body mass. April 13, 2022. This paper states that it's the same. Genetic mutations are the same. While we have another paper here that reads, Somatic mutation rates scale with lifespan across mammals. This was received at uh, 17th of August 2021 and accepted on the 7th of March 2022 and it was published on the 13th of April. Now, this is about if mutation causes aging. The method applied to lifespan. Does mutation rate coincide with low lifespan? Now, this is about the theory of aging. We need to find out a proven theory of aging in order to hone in on mediating therapies. We haven't got a causal theory of aging. Let's start with the first one. Mutations across animal kingdom shed new light on aging. Quantity of mutations acquired similar over a lifetime of 16 species despite vast differences in lifespan and body mass. April 13, 2022, Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute. Summary. A new study compares the accumulation of mutations across many animal species and has shed new light on decades-old questions about the role of these genetic changes in aging and cancer. Researchers found that despite huge variation in lifespan and size, different animal species end their natural life with similar number of genetic changes. So the mutation rate is the same regardless of lifespan. If an animal lives five years, it has accumulated the same amount of mutations as an animal that lives a hundred years. That's a, a little bit up for interpretation considering how can a short-lived animal incur the same amount of mutations as a long-lived animal, wouldn't the long-lived animal incur more mutations? The first study to compare the accumulation of mutations across many animal species has shed new light on decades-old questions about the role of these genetic changes in ageing and cancer. Researchers from the Wellcome Sanger Institute found that despite huge variation in lifespan and size, different animal species end their natural life with similar numbers of genetic changes. The study published today, 13 April 2022 in Nature, analyzed genomes from 16 species of mammal, from mice to giraffes. The authors confirmed that the longer the lifespan of a species, the slower the rate at which mutations occur, lending support to the long-standing theory that somatic mutations play a role in aging. So the longer the lifespan, the slower the rate at which mutations occur. Genetic changes known as somatic mutations occur in all cells throughout the life of an organism. This is a natural process, with cells acquiring around 20 to 50 mutations per year in humans. 
Most of these mutations will be harmless, but some of them can start a cell on the path to cancer or impair the normal functioning of the cell. Since the 1950s, some scientists have speculated that these mutations may play a role in aging, but the difficulty of observing somatic mutations has made it challenging to study the possibility, this possibility. In the last few years, technological advances have finally allowed genetic mutations to be observed in normal tissues, raising hopes of answering the question, this question. Another long-standing question is Pito's paradox. Since cancers develop from single cells, species with larger bodies and therefore more cells should theoretically have a much higher risk of cancer. Yet cancer incidence across animals is independent of body size. Animal species with large bodies are believed to have evolved superior mechanisms to prevent cancer. Whether one such mechanism is a reduction in the accumulation of genetic changes in their tissues has remained untested. In this study, researchers at the Wellcome Sanger Institute set out to test these theories by using new methods to measure somatic mutation in 16 mammalian species covering a wide range of lifespan and body masses. This includes species such as human, mouse, lion, giraffe, tiger, and the long-lived, highly cancer-resistant naked mole rat, with samples provided by a number of organisations, including the Zoological Society of London. So if they had the same amount of mutations, regardless of lifespan, then it would not be a random thing. Whole genome sequences were generated from 208 intestinal crypts taken from 48 individuals to measure mutation rates in single intestinal stem cells. Analysis of the patterns of mutations or mutational signatures provided information on the processes at work. The researchers found that somatic mutations accumulated linearly over time and that they were caused by similar mechanisms across all species, including humans, despite their very different diets and life histories. Evidence of a possible role of somatic mutation in aging was provided by the researchers' discovery that the rate of somatic mutations decreased as the lifespan of each species increased. Dr. Alex Kagan, a first author of the study from the Wellcome Sanger Institute, said, to find a similar pattern of genetic changes in animals as different from one another as a mouse and a tiger was surprising. But the most exciting aspect of the study has to be finding that lifespan is inversely proportional to the somatic mutation rate. This suggests that somatic mutations may play a role in aging, although alternative explanations may be possible. Over the next few years, it will be fascinating to extend these studies into even more diverse species, such as insects and plants. The search for an answer to Pito's paradox goes on, however. After accounting for lifespan, the authors found no significant association between somatic mutation rate and body mass, indicating that other factors must be involved in larger animals' ability to reduce their cancer risk relative to their body size. Dr. Adrian Bayes Ortega, a first author of the study from the Wellcome Sanger Institute, said, The fact that differences in somatic mutation rates seem to be explained by differences in lifespan rather than body size suggests that order, although adjusting the mutation rate sounds like an elegant way of controlling the incidence of cancer across species, evolution has not actually chosen this path. It is quite possible that every time a species evolves a larger size than its ancestors, as in giraffes, elephants and whales, evolution might come up with a different solution to this problem. 
we will need to study these species in greater detail to find out. Despite vast differences in lifespan and body mass between the 16 species studied, the quantity of somatic mutations acquired over each animal's lifetime was relatively similar. On average, a giraffe is 40,000 times bigger than a mouse, and a human lives 30 times longer. But the difference in the number of somatic mutations per cell at the end of the lifespan between the three species only varied by around a factor of three. Dr. Simon Spiro, ZSL, Zoological Society of London Wildlife Veterinary Pathologist said, animals often live much longer in zoos than they do in the wild. So our vet's time is often spent dealing with conditions related to old age. The genetic changes identified in this study suggest that diseases of old age will be similar acro across a wide range of mammals, whether old age begins at 7 months or 70 years, and will help us keep these animals help, healthy and happy in their later years. Understanding the exact causes of ageing remains an unsolved question and an area of active investigation. Ageing is likely to be caused by the accumulation of multiple types of damage to our cells and tissues throughout life, including somatic mutations, protein aggregation and epigenetic changes, among others. Comparing the rates of these processes across species with very different lifespans can shed light on their role in ageing. Dr. Inigo Martin Corena, senior author of the study from the Welcome Sanger Institute, said aging is a complex process, the result of multiple forms of molecular damage in our cells and tissues. Somatic mutations have been speculated to contribute to aging since the 1950s. But studying them has remained difficult with the recent advances in DNA sequencing technology. We can finally investigate the roles that somatic mutations play in aging and multiple diseases. That is that this diverse range of mammals end their lives with a similar number of mutations in their cells is an exciting and intriguing discovery. Here's the journal references. What does that mean? Who knows? So this is another, oh, this is the same article. This is just titled differently. Somatic mutation rate scale with lifespan across mammals. It's the same people. Alex Kagan. Let's have, let's have a look at uh, this other one here. These are all the people that two, three. So it's the same people. It's just this is the this is the larger article. It's the same article. This is the full article, which is the thirty three page article. Let's go into it. It's thirty three pages long. <clears throat> are we gonna do thirty three pages? I don't know. Article reads, somatic mutation rate scale with lifespan across mammals. Published 13 April 2022. The rates and patterns of somatic mutation in normal tissues are largely unknown outside of humans. Comparative analysis can shed light on the diversity of mutagenesis across species and on long-standing hypotheses about the evolution of somatic mutation rates and their role in cancer and aging. Here we performed whole genome sequencing of 208 intestinal crypts from 56 individuals to study the landscape of somatic mutation across 16 mammalian species. We found that somatic mutagenesis was dominated by seemingly endogenous mutational processes in all species. 
including 5 methyl cytosine demination and oxidative damage. With some differences, mutational signatures in other species resembled those described in humans. Although the relative contribution of each signature varied across species, notably the somatic mutation rate per year varied greatly across species and exhibited a strong inverse relationship with species lifespan, with no other life history trait studied showing a comparable association, despite widely different life histories among the species we examined, including variation of around 30-fold in lifespan and around 40,000-fold in body mass. The somatic mutation burden at the end of lifespan varied by about a factor of three. These data unveil common mutational processes across mammals and suggest that somatic mutation rates are evolutionarily constrained and may be a contributing factor to aging. Somatic mutations accumulate in healthy cells throughout life. They underpin the development of cancer and for decades have been speculated to contribute to aging. The problem is you can take one of those old cells, the nucleus of one of those old cells, you can do a somatic transfer into an embryo and get a brand new young baby on the other side. You can do a somatic cell transfer of one of these aged cells which has that mutation, post-mutation rate, put it into an embryonic cell and get a brand new healthy baby on the other side. One. Two. Okay. If you get a mutation that changes the molecular structure of a, an essential protein, it's probably agreed that the result is going to be some, some sickness, some pathology, some disease. But that mutation would have to be organism-wide. A mutation in one cell in one trillion isn't going to have much of an effect. And the probability of the same mutation across multiple cells is unlikely. So what is going on? Is that valid? Is that valid to say that you can take one of those cells that are mutated to that degree and then do a somatic cell transfer and get a brand new healthy offspring on the other side? that healthy lifespan, the healthy offspring on the other side has the same amount of lifespan. Planarias are asexual reproduction. They're incurring mutations, but they continue to live. Evolution would eliminate anything that's too extreme and can't function. So the amount of mutations that can occur would have to be limited to still being functional. Uh, Currently, we're thinking about methods of obtaining truth. And these papers are okay. You know, these papers are great. But what we're thinking about is how do we eliminate one thing or another. How do we bypass the mitochondrial system in order to determine its effect? How do we bypass the nucleolus so we can isolate 
one from the other to see the effect that they have. In the same way that I'm talking about somatic cell transfer of an aged cell uh, creating, cloning a new, brand new offspring that is perfectly healthy with the caveat that it, that um, the mutation didn't occur at, a, at an essential location that changes the molecular integrity of, of an essential membrane. Somatic mutations accumulate in healthy cells throughout life. They underpin the development of cancer and for decades have been speculated to contribute to aging. Now, I thought that cancer oncogenes weren't mutations. I thought they were activated, they were expressed. And if you had an oncogene, you were more likely to express that gene under some kind of carcinogen environment. Because we have a list of carcinogens as the main way that we understand the causes of cancer. Those carcinogens alter the microenvironment. The result is epigenetic changes that switches on the oncogenes rather than damage that leads to cancer. Now, I, don't, I can't say that for the entirety of cancers. Directly studying somatic mutations in normal tissues has been challenging owing to the difficulty of detecting mutations present in single cells or small clones in a tissue. Only recent technological developments, such as in vitro expansion of single cells into colonies, microdissection of histological units, single cell sequencing or single molecule sequencing, are beginning to enable the study of somatic mutation in normal tissues. Over the last few years, studies in humans have started to provide a detailed understanding of somatic mutation rates and the contribution of endogenous and exogenous mutational processes across normal tissues. These studies are also revealing how, as we age, some human tissues are colonized by mutant cells that contain cancer-driving mutations and how this clonal composition changes with age and disease. With the exception of some initial studies, far less is known about somatic mutations in other species. Yet comparative analysis of somatic mutagenesis would shed light on the diversity of mutagenic processes across species and on long-standing questions regarding the evolution of somatic mutation rates and their role in cancer and aging. A decades-long hypothesis on the evolution of somatic mutation rates pertains to the relationship between body mass and cancer risk. Some models predict that the risk of cancer should increase proportionally to the number of cells at risk of transformation. However, there appears to be no correlation between body mass and cancer risk across species. This observation, known as Pito's paradox, suggests that the evolution of larger body sizes is likely to require the evolution of stronger cancer suppression mechanisms. Whether evolutionary reduction of cancer risk across species is partly achieved by a reduction of somatic mutation rates remains unknown. A second long-standing hypothesis is on evolution of somatic mutation rate relates to the proposed role of somatic mutations in aging. Multiple forms of molecular damage, including somatic mutations, telomere attrition, epigenetic drift, and loss of proteostasis, have been proposed to contribute to aging but their causal role and relative contributions remain debated. Yeah, they remain debated. So what we need to find a way to really isolate their function from the cell to determine what their role is, probably for each of the hallmarks of aging.
because you could have you could be it could be multifactorial probably is multifactorial but you might have 5% there 2% there 10% there Evolutionary theory predicts that species will evolve protection and repair mechanism against life-threatening damage to minimize death from intrinsic causes. But that selection is too weak to delay aging far beyond the typical, typical life expectancy of an organism in the wild. Supplementary note one. It's actually uh, very comprehensive. We don't know if supplementary note one is... If somatic mutations contribute to aging, theory predicts that somatic mutation rates may be inversely correlate with lifespan across species. This prediction has remained largely untested owing to the difficulty of measuring somatic mutation rates across species. Detection of somatic mutations across species. The study of somatic mutation with standard whole genome sequencing requires isolating clonal groups of cells recently derived from a single cell. To study somatic mutations across a diverse set of mammals, we isolated 208 individual intestinal crypts from 56 individuals across 16 species with a wide range of lifespan and body sizes. Black and white, colobus, monkey, cat, cow, dog, ferret, giraffe, harbour, porpoise, horse, human, lion, mouse, naked mole rat, rabbit, rat, ring-tailed lemur, and tiger. We chose intestinal crypts for several reasons. First, they are histologically identifiable units that line the epithelium of the colon and small intestine and are amenable to laser microdissection. Second, human studies have confirmed that individual crypts become clonally derived from a single stem cell and show a linear accumulation of mutations with age, which enables the estimation of somatic mutation rates through genome sequencing of single crypts. Third, in most human crypts, most somatic mutations are caused by endogenous mutational process common to other tissues rather than by environmental mutagens. A common sample was collected from each individual with the exception of a ferret from which only a small intestine sample was available. This sample was included because results in humans have shown that the mutation rates of colorectal and small intestine epithelial stem cells are similar. Somatic mutation burden in mammalian colorectal crypts. Horse, lion, naked mole rat, rat. Let's look at multi mutations per genome. Mutations. Histology images of colon samples from horse, lion, naked mole, rat, rat, with one colorectal crypt marked in each. Scale bars 250 micro meters. Burden of somatic substitutions and indels per diploid genome in each colorectal crypt sample correlated for the size of the analyzable genome. Samples are grouped by individual with samples from the same individual colored in the same shade. Species and individuals within each species are sorted by mean mutation burden. C. Linear regression of somatic substitution burden correlated by analyzable genome size on individual age for dog, human, mouse, and naked mole rat samples. Samples from the same individuals are shown in the same color. 
Regression was performed using mean mutation variables per individual shaded areas indicate 95% confidence individuals intervals of the regression line. Mutations, age in years. So this is a, a, a mole rat. And this is the mutations it's getting through the years. A mouse is getting the same mutation rate. Through its lifespan here, it's got 4,000. Human gets 4,000 through his life. And here, 3,000 through its life. This suggests that the mutation rates are the same. So a human has 4,000 mutations by age 80 and... For example, a dog has a similar amount in 14 years. So it, it's actually getting more mutations per year. And humans are getting less mutations per year. It's like a rate of mutation is identical regardless of lifespan. Or it coincides with lifespan, more so. So a human is living 80 years for us, 4,000 mutations, while a dog is living four, 14 years for its 3,000 mutations. To correlate whether mutations, the rate of mutation is the cause of aging. So if the human would have only got 1,000 mutations, its, its lifespan will be 4x. Because it will have to reach a certain amount of mutations, which is coinciding with its lifespan. which leads to those groups which are fixing, trying to supplement the repair of DNA and to stop mutations from occurring. But we still have to, there's still that question, which is, how much of aging is relative to this, if at all. Because, like I said previously, if the proteins that are generated from these mutations become molecularly altered, they will perform differently on a material level. And therefore, they might be, there might be a higher susceptibility of, subject to failure. Just like the laminae mutation in the progeria. We then use laser microdissection on histological section to isolate individual crypts for whole genome sequencing with low input library preparation method. With the exception of human crisps, for which sequencing data were obtained from a previous study, a bioinformatic pipeline was developed to cause somatic mutation robustly in all these species despite the variable quality of their genome assemblies methods. The distribution of a variant allele fractions of the mutations detected in each crypt confirmed that CRIPS are clonal units in all species, enabling the study of somatic mutations, rates, and signatures. 
We found substantial variation in the number of somatic single base substitution across species and across individuals within each species. For five species with samples from multiple individuals, dog, human, mouse, snake, mole, rat, and rat, linear regression confirmed a clear accumulation of somatic mutations with age. Extended data fig four. All linear regressions were also consistent with a non significant intercept. This resembles observations in humans and suggests that the time required for a single stem cell to drift to fixation within a crypt is a small fraction of the lifespan of a species. This facilitates the estimation of somatic mutation rates across species by dividing the number of mutations in a crypt by the age of the individual. The number of somatic insertions and deletions in DELs were consistently lower than that of substitutions in all crypts, in agreement with previous findings in humans. Mutational signatures across mammals. Somatic mutations can be caused by multiple mutational processes involved involving different forms of DNA damage and repair. Different processes cause characteristic frequencies of base substitution. Types and endows at different sequence contexts often referred to as mutational signatures, which can be inferred from mutation data. Across species, the mutational spectra showed clear similarities with a dominance of cytosine to thymine substitution at CPG sites. All right, so now they're talking about those CPG sites. Remember those other guys talking about the CPG sites, how the CPG sites are the main area, some important area of aging that the, C, the CPG sites as observed in human colon, but with considerably variation in the frequency of other substitution types. To qualify the contribution of different mutational processes to the observed spectra, we applied mutational signature decomposition. We used a Bayesian model to infer mutational signatures, de novo, while accounting for differences in genome sequence composition across species and using the cosmic human signature, SBSI. C is greater than T substitutions at CPG sites as a fixed prior to ensure its complete devolution of methods. This approach identified two signatures beyond SBS1 labeled SBSB and SBSC, which resemble cosmic human signatures SBS5 and SBS18, respectively. Cosine similarities 0.93 to 0.91. This analysis suggests that the same three signatures that dominate somatic mutagenesis in human colon are dominant in other mammals. SBS1, which is believed to be the result of spontaneous demination of 5-methylcysteine, SBSB, SBS5, a common signature across human tissues that may result from endogenous damage and repair. And SBS, SBS18, which is dominated by CA substitutions and attributed to oxidative DNA damage signature. SPSC contains a minor component of TA substitutions resembling TA, which appear to be the result of DNA polymerase slippage at the boundaries between adjacent adenine and thymine homopolymer tracts, but could also reflect the simply errors of these sites. So this is the, uh, the letters that have been assigned to the DNA acids and there's a substitution going on. So the mutation is sometimes the T becomes the A or the C becomes the A. Although all of the species that were examined shared three mutational signatures, their contributions vary substantially across species. SPCC was particularly prominent in mouse and ferret, 
and the ratio of SBS1 to SBS5 varied from approximately 1.2 in rat or rabbit to 6.4 in tiger. In several species with data from multiple individuals, separate linear regression for each signature confirmed that mutations from all three signatures accumulate with age. We'll get to those figures later. Although signature deconvolution identify three signatures that are active across species, we notice some differences in the mutational profile of signature is BSB among species. To investigate this further, we inferred independent versions of SBSB from each species while accounting for differences in genome sequence composition methods. This revealed interspecies variability in the mutational profile from this signature, particularly in the C to T component. Species specific versions of SBSB show different similarities to the related human signatures SBS5 and SBS40. So they would have to change the mutation rate. They would have to find a way of enhancing DNA repair in an experiment to determine if DNA damage correlates with lifespan. That's the obvious experiment is to try and breed a mice that has a very low mutation rate. Either um, like a transgenic mite, mice that has a very low mutation rate or and see if its lifespan extends because of its low mutation rate or some other method perhaps by just hacking the genome with some CRISPR and trying to get enhanced repair in that mice. I guess that would be applicable to every question because you are able to measure the level of mutation. Therefore, you're able to, you're able, if you're able to create a, uh, a transgenic mice or a mice that had its repair upregulated, and then you could measure that its rate of mutation was significantly less and then determine how long that mouse would live compared to, say, the wild type, then you would have determined something about ageing. If you could measure some hallmark of ageing, you could then try and create some type of mouse that didn't have that or had some aspect of it upregulated so the amount of that would be lower to determine its effects on aging. For example, SPS inferred from the human data showed a strong similarity with the reference human signature SPS5, cosine similarities SPS5 and SPS4, 8.9, 8.43, 8.4. Whereas SBSB from rabbit more closely resembled the reference human signature, SBS4, 8.7, 9.1. These observations are consistent with the hypothesis that SBS5 and SBS4 result from a combination of correlated mutational process with some variation across human tissues and across species. Analysis of indel mutational spectra revealed a dominance of human indel signatures ID1 and ID2, which are characterized by the single nucleate indels at AT homopolymers and probably caused by strand slippage during DNA replication. The ratio of insertions and deletions appears to vary across species, possibly ref reflecting differences, propensity for slippage of the template and nascent DNA strands, in addition to indel spectra, suggest a potential contribution of signature ID9, the ideology of which remains unknown to human, colobus, cow, and rabbit. We saw this before. So figure A was the histology, histology images of colon samples from horse, lion, naked mole rat, with one cor colorectal crypt marked in each scale bus. 
So that's what that's what they're measuring. While B shows the burden of somatic substitution in indels per diploid genome in each colorectal crypt. So these are the substitutions. What is it? What does it say? Mutations per genome. Are they the same? Uh, here you got four thousand in humans, lions. You got very low in naked mole rat. Mm, that's a little bit too. A little bit too much. Oh, rabbit. A little bit too easy to, to, to assume that. Dog. Well, C is a linear regression of somatic substitution burden. Here's the same thing, mutations, humans 4,000, mouse 2,000, naked mole rat 800. But that is, does the naked mole rat live 32 years or is that just the female? I think it's just the female queen that lives 32 years and the males don't live 32 years. So here it's got eight years. So it only lives up to eight years with 800 mutations. Well, human lives 80 years with 4,000 mutations, and mouse lives two years with 2,000 mutations. Well, a dog lives about 14 years with 3,000 mutations. <laughs> What does that say? I don't know what it says. I think you'd have to eliminate it to get the information from it. It's too hard to decipher. You'd have to uh, breed a mouse that has no DNA damage, that incurs no DNA damage. Versus... Uh, and compare it to one that does. Analysis of Indow's longer than one base pair also suggested the presence of a signature of four base pair insertions. A tetrameric repeats which was particularly prevalent in mouse and tiger. A pattern of insertions of five or more base pairs of at repeats in colobus and a pattern of deletions of five or more base pairs at repeats, which was prominent in rabbit and resembles ID8, a signature possibly caused by double strand break repair through non-homologous enjoining other mutational processes and selections. The apparent lack of additional mutational signatures is noteworthy. A previous study of 445 colorectal crypts from 42 human donors found that many crypts were affected by a signature that was later attributed to colobactin, a genotoxin produced by BKS strains of Escherichia coli. Escherichia coli. Analyzing the original human data of our non-human data with the same methodology. We found evidence of colobactin mutagenesis in 20%, 21% of human crypts, but only uncertain evidence in colobactin in one non-human crypt. This revealed a significant depletion of Colobactin mutagenesis in the non-human crypts studied. 
Fisher's exact test P equals 7 times 10 to the minus 14. The apparent difference in Colobacter mutagenesis is observed between species or between cohorts studied. Might re resolve from a different prevalence of PKS E. coli strains or a different expression of Colobacter by PKS E. coli across species. Finally, we also search for evidence of a BOC, a POBEC signatures, SBS2 and SBS13, which have been reported in small numbers of human crypts that are believed to be caused by apobec DNA editing cytodyne demonases. We detected apobec signatures in 2% of all human crypts and found only uncertain evidence in one non-human crypt. Beyond substitutions and indels, crypts from eight species with chromosome level genome assemblies were inspected for large scale copy number changes of at least one megabyte methods. Studies in humans have found that large scale copy numbers changes are relatively rare in normal tissues, including the epithelium. Now let's look at this. Mutation factions. So these are the substitutions. They were talking about the mutation. Substitute the code of the protein, which then represents an alteration in the molecular structure of the organism, which in turn could cause system failure if it proliferated to the degree. These are the rates of the different types of substitution with, with the CT substitution being the highest in human and while and with the TG substitution being the lowest in occurrence. They continue that on for the different species of rat, mouse and dog and it appears that it's the same in every animal except for the mouse and the ferret that seem to have a higher rate of C to A mutation substitution. So this is a, they'll give you the mutation probability. in each level with a different probability of mutations among the different letters of the DNA. Exposure. And here we go, mutations, SPS1. This is just a different level of mutations that are occurring. So here they are, figure two, mutational process in the mammalian column, colon. Mutational spectra of semitic substitutions in each species. The x-axis shows 96 mutation types on uh, trinucleide context colored by base substitution types. Mutational B. B was um, mutational signatures inferred from SPS B and SPS C or fitted SPS1 the species mutational spectra shown in A normalized to the human genome try nucleotide frequencies the y axis shows the mutation post probability Estim C was estimated contribution of each signature to each sample samples are arranged horizontally D, linear regression, signature-specific mutation burdens, corrected for analysis, analyzable genome size or individual age for human, mouse, and naked mole rat samples. Regression was performed using the mutation burdens per individual shaded errors, indicate 95% confidence intervals 
of the regression line. It is what it is. Consistent with these results, we only identified four large copy number changes across 162 CRIPS included in this analysis, two megabase scale deletions in two CRIPS from the same cow, the loss of an X chromosome in a female mouse CRIP and a 52 megabytes segment with a copy neutral loss of heterozygosity in a human crypt. The results suggest that large-scale somatic copy number changes in normal tissues are also rare in other mammalian species. Previous analyses in humans have shown that the most somatic mutations in colorectal crypts accumulate neutrally without clear evidence of negative selection against non synonymous mutations and with a low frequency of positively selected cancer-driven mutations. To study somatic selection in our data, we calculated the exome-wide ratio of non-synonymous and synonymous substitution rates in each of these 12 species with available genome annotation to do so and to detect genes under positive selection while accounting for the effects of the trinucleotide. Sequence. And mutation right across species. We used DN, DND SV model. Although the limited number of coding somatic mutations observed in most species precluded an in depth analysis of selection exa wide DNS DS ratios of somatic substitutions were not significantly different from unity in any species in line with previous findings in humans. Gene level analysis did not find genes under significant positive selection in any species, although large studies are likely to identify rare cancer driver mutation. So what have we got here? Mutations per year. End of life span burden. But I thought you said they were all the same. They're not. Well, the, the, the human gets less mutations per year and, and correlating with achieving this, getting the same amount of mutations at the end of life as, say, a mouse, and therefore must get those mutations at a slower rate have an end of life burden that is similar across species. So that that is clear. So see the human is getting a, a very low mutation rate while the mouse is getting a far higher mutation rate. Is there a correlation there? You don't know. Like I said previously, you, you would have to get a mouse that has far less mutation rates. I mean, you've gone, you, you're able to measure it. You're able to find which which substitutions are occurring. You be you should. Uh, I don't know if you can be able to, but the possibility is by getting a mouse that doesn't have these mutation rates, either by adding many repair genes in its thing in order to get its thing right and see do you get an extended lifespan when these mutation rates are brought well down we can't we can't create any correlation associations with this because we don't have that that one to one difference it's an inference among a wide range of possibilities Because we could go on along with this, and if we get that mouse 
that has no mutations throughout its lifespan and it has an unusually long lifespan, then there will be then we can make that association. Because we could get a mouse like that and then we see no extension in its lifespan. And then we'd have wasted all of this time. So, so well, this is good. We need that mouse. All right, what is that? So here's lifespan. So I said lifespan. It's not a dirty word. I said I can say lifespan. Mean mutation rate per year. So the mouse is getting 800 mutation rates per year. And the human is getting less than 200. And the lifespan is a correlation graphs between lifespan and mutation rate. And this one is done by mass. The mass E is by the mass of the organism. So the mouse has a little bit little mass, high mutation rate. The giraffe has a, a big mass and and F is the fraction of interspecies variance explained. So this is the difference between species. Some differences. Adult mass, lifespan in years, mutation rates. Correlation with life history traits. Whereas similar mutational processes operate across species surveyed, the mutation rate per genome per year varied widely. Across the 15 species with age information, we found that substitution rates per genome ranged from 47 substitutions per year in humans to 796 substitutions per year in mice. And indel rates of 2.5 to 158 indels per year, respectively. To investigate the relationship between the somatic mutation rates, lifespan, and other historic history traits, we first estimated the lifespan of each species using survival curves. We used a large collection of mortality data from animals in zoos to minimize the effect of intrinsic mortality. We define lifespan as the age at which 80% of individuals reaching adulthood have died to reduce the effects of outliers and variable cohort size that affect maximum lifespan estimates. Notably, we found a tight anti-correlation between somatic mutation rates per year and lifespan across species. A log log alimeric, alimetric a log log allometric regression yield a strong linear and anti correlation between mutation rate per year and lifespan. Fraction of interspecies variance explained FVE 0.85. See, this correlation that you're creating, this correlation that you're putting forward is not definitive enough. Because it isn't a comparison between one thing or another. One thing or another. It is far too, there are far too many variables. It's, it's comprehensive work, but it isn't 
a one-to-one -one comparison. So the association cannot be made. It can only be imagined. We're still in the realm of imagining a connection. We're not in the realm a bullying realm of saying if one thing is one thing, then one thing is not the other. By having two opposites exhibiting something. Because I'm a Bachelor of Science. So it's about the scientific method. <clears throat> this supports a simple model in which somatic mutation rates per year are inversely proportional to the lifespan of a species. Rate to 1 over lifespan. Such that the number of somatic mutations per cell at the end of the lifespan to the end of the lifespan burden is similar in all species. To further study the relationship between somatic mutation rates and life history variables, we use linear mixed effects, LME, regression models. These models account for the hierarchical structure of the data with multiple crisps per individual and multiple individuals per species, as well as hetero scarcity of somatic mutation rate estimates across species. Using these models, we estimated that the inverse of lifespan explained 82% of the interspecies variance in somatic substitution rates with the slope of this regression, representing the mean estimated ELB across species. 3,206.4 substitution per genome per crypt, 95% confidence interval, 2,683.9, 3,728.9. Of note, despite uncertainty, is the estimate of both somatic mutation rates and lifespans. And despite the diverse life histories of the species surveyed, including around 30-fold variation in lifespan, around 40,000-fold 40, 40, variation in body mass, the estimated mutation load per cell at the end of the lifespan varied by only around threefold across species. Analogous results were obtained when replacing the analysis with estimates of the protein coding mutation rate, which may be better proxy for functional effect of somatic mutation. 85% of variance explained, there will be 31 coding substitutions per crypt. We next examine the association between somatic mutation rates and adult body mass, which is known to be a common confounder in correlations that involve lifespan. An anti-correlation between somatic mutation rates and body mass may be expected if the modulation of cancer risk across species is vastly of vastly different sizes has been a major factor in the evolution of somatic mutation rate. So they're answering all of the questions. You know, how does an animal that has more tissue where the probability just by having more tissue is that something could go wrong? when compared to a, a small animal, and instead it's an anti-correlation. The bigger animal with more tissue and by more tissue automatically that there is a higher probability of something going wrong is actually better equipped, actually has a longer lifespan. We observed that long transformed adult body mass was less strongly associated with somatic substitution rates than the inverse of lifespan. Elemetric regression, FEO.21, figure 3D, LMD regression, FEO.4433. Given that lifespan is correlated with body mass, we perform two tests to assess whether body mass explained any variation in somatic mutation rates that was not explained by lifespan. 
first including both the inverse of lifespan and long transformed adult body mass in the regression model suggested that body mass does not explain a significant amount of variance in somatic mutation rates across species after accounting for the effect of lifespan likelihood ratio, ratio test PI for, for body mass on a model with lifespan for lifespan on a model with body mass. Second, partial correlation analysis using allometric regressions further confirmed that the association between somatic mutation rates and lifespan is unlikely to be mediated by the effect of body mass on both variables. The fact that the variation in somatic mutation rate across species appears to be dominated by lifespan rather than body size is also apparent when looking at particularly informative species. Giraffe and naked mole rat, for instance, have similar somatic mutation rates, 99 and 93 substitutions per year, respectively, in line with their similar lifespans. 80th percentiles, 24 and 25 years respectively, despite a difference of around 23,000 fold in adult body mass. Similarly, cows, giraffes and horses weigh much more than the average human and yet have somatic mutation rates that are seven fold higher, several fold higher, in line with expectation from their lifespan, but not their body mass. Although the weak correlation between body mass and somatic mutation rates of the correlation for lifespan suggests that the evolution of larger body sizes may have relied on alternative or additional strategies to limit cancer risk, as have been speculated. So, they give you the reason, which is evolution created a management system to account for it so that the larger body mass did not mean you know an unworkable high mutation rate but that um, there was some thing that stopped it the mutation rates from being relative to body mass. Of note, the low somatic mutation rate of naked mole rats, which is unusual for their body mass, but in line with their long lifespan, might contribute to the exceptionally low incident rates of cancer in this species. We found similar results for other life history variables that have been proposed to correlate with lifespan, namely basal metabolic rate and litter size, with the caveat that estimates for these variables vary in quality. They showed weaker correlations with the somatic mutation rates as single predictors and small non-significant increases in explanatory power with, when considered together with lifespan, likelihood ratio tests, valimeric being our residues. We know that the results above are robust to the use of alternative measures of the somatic mutation rate, including the rate per exosome, exome or mutations per megabyte, alternative estimates of lifespan, including maximal maximal lifespan, alternative regression models, including Bayesian hierarchical model, and uh, follow genetic generalized least squares regression, which accounts for the effects of follow genetic relationships and bootstrapping analysis at the level of individuals or species. Mutational processes and lifespan. To investigate whether a single biological process could drive the association between somatic mutation rates and lifespan, we analyzed each citation. We analyzed each mutational signature separately. SBS1, SBS B5, SBS18 are believed to result from different forms of DNA damage and are expected to be subject to different DNA repair pathways. They also appear to differ in their association with the rate of cell division in humans, with SBS1B more common 
in fast proliferating tissues such as colon and embryonic or fetal tissues and SBS5 dominating in post-mitotic cells in the absence of cell division. Overall, we found a clear anti-correlation. We found clear anti-correlations between mutation rates per year and lifespan for the three substitution signatures and for indels, suggesting that a single biological process of DNA repair pathway is unlikely to be responsible for this association. The total mutation burden also appears to show a closer fit with lifespan than individual mutational processes, as measured by a range of end of lifespan burden for each process across species. This might be expected if the observed anti-correlation were the result of evolutionary pressure on somatic mutation rates. DNA damage and somatic mutations in the mitochondrial genome have also attracted considerable interest in the aging field. Our genome sequencing of individual CRIPS provide high coverage of the mitochondrial genome, ranging from 2,188 to 29,691 fold, nominalized against the nuclear coverage. These data suggest that Colorectal crypts contain the order of about 100 to 2,000 mitochondrial genomes per cell. Using a mutation calling algorithm that is sensitive to low frequency variants, we found a total of 261 mitochondrial mutations across 199 crypts. The mutational spectra across species appeared broadly consistent with that of observed in humans, with a dominance of C to T and A to G substitutions that are believed to be the result of mitochondrial DNA replication errors rather than DNA damage. Although the low number of mitochondrial mutations detected per species precludes a detailed analysis. The estimated number of somatic mutations per copy of mtDNA also appears to show an anti-correlation with lifespan across species. We obtained an average of 0.23 detectable mutations per copy of mitochondrial genomes by end of lifespan, a considerable burden given the coding sequence density and the functional relevance of the mitochondrial genome. So, this is the figure here. They separated all of the mutations to see if it was a single mutation that had more of an effect than other mutations. And they seem to find that not all, there is no single mutation type that could account for these effects. Then they also done the mitochondrial DNA and found no correlation. So the assumption is that um, it's it's the whole thing. It's the total uh, result of of all of this that is causal to lifespan. Discussion using whole genome sequence of two hundred and eight colorectal crypts from 56 individuals, we provide insight into the somatic mutational landscape from 16 mammalian species. Despite their different diets and life history, we found considerable similarities in their mutational spectra. Three main mutational signatures explain the spectra across species, albeit with varying contributions and subtle variations in the profile of signature SBSB. These suggest 
that at least in the colorectal epithelium, a conserved set of mutational processes dominates somatic mutagenesis across species. The most notable finding of this study in the inverse scaling of somatic mutation rates with lifespan, a long-standing prediction of the somatic mutation theory of aging. Considering evolutionarily and mechanistic models of aging together provide a framework for discussing possible implication of these results for aging, jointly these models predict aging to be multifactorial with multiple forms of molecular and cellular damage contributing to an organismal aging owing to evolutionary limits to selection acting on the rates of these processes, the inverse scaling of somatic mutation rates and lifespan is consistent with somatic mutation contributing to aging and with somatic mutation rates being evolutionarily constrained, although we discuss alternative explanations below. This interpretation is also supported by studies reporting more efficient DNA repair in long-lived species. Somatic mutations could contribute to aging in different ways. Traditionally, they have been proposed to contribute to aging through deleterious effects on cellular fitness, but recent findings question this assumption. Instead, the discovery of widespread clonal expansion in aging human tissues raises the possibility that some somatic mutations contribute to aging by driving clonal expansions of functionally altered cells at a cost to the organism. Examples include the possible links between clonal hematopoiesis and cardiovascular disease between mutations in liver disease and insulin resistance and between driving mutations in cavernomas and brain hemorrhages. Detailed studies of the extent and effect of somatic mutations on clonal expansions on age-related diseases and aging phenotypes may help to clarify the precise role, if any, of somatic mutations in aging. Even if clear causal links between somatic mutation and aging are established, aging is likely to be multifactorial. Other forms of molecular damage involved in aging could be expected to show similar anticorrelations with lifespan, and indeed such anticorrelations have been reported for telomere shortening and protein turnover. Alternative non-causal explanations for the observed anticorrelation between somatic mutation rates and lifespan need to be considered. One alternative explanation is that the cell division rates could scale with lifespan and explain the observed somatic mutation rates. Available estimates of cell division rates, although imperfect and limited to a few species, do not readily support this argument. More importantly, studies in humans have shown that cell division rates are not a major determinant of somatic mutation rates across human tissues. Another alternative explanation for the observed anticorrelation might be that selection acts to reduce germline mutation rates in species with longer reproductive span, which in turn causes an anticorrelation of somatic mutation rates in lifespan. Although selective pressures on Germline mutation rates could influence somatic mutation rates. It is unlikely that germline mutation rates tightly determine somatic mutation rates. Somatic mutation rates in humans are 20, 10 to 20 times higher than germline mutation rates. Show variability across cell sites and influenced by additional mutational processes. Overall, the strong scaling of somatic mutation rates with lifespan across mammals despite the different rates between germline and soma and the variable contributions of different mutational processes across species suggest this, suggests that somatic mutation rates themselves have been evolutionarily constrained, possibly through selection on multiple repair pathways. Alternative explanations need to be able to explain the strength of the scaling despite these differences. Altogether, this study provides a detailed description of somatic mutations across mammals, identifying common and variable features and shedding light on long-standing hypotheses. Scaled across the tree of life and across tissues in species with markedly different physiologies 
physiologies, physiologies, life history, genome, composition to mutagenic exposure, similar studies promise to transform our understanding of somatic mutation effects of evolution, aging and disease. Okay, so this is all the, the references. These are the methods, the collection and varying column. Computer turned off. Immortality cryptocurrency. Head on down to the website, grab yourself a bag. Um, the conclusion is we would like a one-to-one -one comparison. That's all we want, a one-to-one -one comparison. How to create a mouse that doesn't have mutations in it and how to, how to compare that with a wild-type mouse. We know, we know the lifespan of a wild-type mouse. How do you create a mouse that doesn't have the, that mutation rate or uh, – giving it CRISPR so all its mutations are corrected all the time so that we can have that one-to-one -one comparison. That's pretty much the experiment that is required. And once you get that experiment, you can um, isolate different parts of it because... And that's all. And that would be indisputable. Well, this is still highly vague. It's not definitive enough. Okay, over and out. See you later.